All right, hi guys, and welcome to another lesson. Sorry, it seemed like it said I'm muted. No, I'm not muted. All right, <laughs> never mind. Let's get right into it. So I'm going to open our Ingu website so that we can get to our article. As I always say, you can come here to ingu.com. They have a lot of articles and kind of like lessons you can do by yourself. And they also offer one-on-one -on -one lessons if you want to work with an actual teacher. But let's see. <clears throat> First, oh, Republicans win U.S. House. Trump announces election plan. I don't feel like politics today. Let's look at street food. Yes, that's a lot better. Keep it light for a Saturday night. All right, so the article for today, top rated street foods from around the world. As always, we're gonna start with our vocabulary. I'm gonna read it. I'd like you to hit pause, read it yourself, say it out loud, Get make sure you get the pronunciation down. If you're not sure about the definition, type it in Google. You can have a look further. A lot of times a word can have more than one meaning depending on the context. So let's start. First word, fry, to cook in oil. You are supposed to fry the onions until they start to get soft. Next one, we've got crispy, of food hard and dry in a pleasant way. These waffles are perfect. They're crispy on the outside, but soft and fluffy on the inside. All right, the next one, a layer, <clears throat> a sheet, amount, etc., of a material that covers a surface or sits between surfaces. I hate being cold, so I, wait, so I wear about four layers of clothes when I go skiing. I hate being cold as well. Next one, juicy, of food, containing a lot of liquid in a way that is pleasant. These apples we got from the market are so juicy and delicious. Mm -hmm. Makes me hungry, all these words. <laughs> Next one, skewer, a long piece of wood or metal used for holding pieces of food while they are cooking. Once you've put the vegetables on the skewers, cover them with oil before cooking. All right, last one, coal, a black or dark brown rock that is burned to produce energy. Over 20% of the U.S.'s energy comes from coal. <clears throat> All right, so let's go into our article. Again, I'm going to read this. I'd like you to hit pause after each little paragraph and then read it. Make sure again you got the pronunciation down and... Read at the speed that you're comfortable with. Don't try and go too fast. If you're not, if you're struggling with the pronunciation, just slow it down a little bit. And uh, as you get more comfortable, you can start speeding things up. Okay, so let's start. Top-rated street foods from around the world. Often a country's best food isn't found in five-star restaurants, but instead can be found on the street. Certain cities such as Bangkok and Istanbul are famous for their street food culture. But some street foods are more popular than others. And food website Taste Atlas has released a list of the top 100 best street foods in the world, according to readers. So here are the top five. Number one, R Ruti Kanai, Malaysia. Ooh, this, <laughs> this is a traditional pan-fried flour-based flatbread made with eggs and ghee and Indian butter. The flatbread is soft on the inside and crispy on the outside and folded to give it many layers. I love roti. They have it here in Thailand as well. Yeah. All right, number two. Ooh, I'm not sure about this one. Karagi, Karagi, Japan. Karagi is a type of cooking where food is deep fried, most often chicken. Starch is used to make sure water is not lost from the food during cooking meaning the chicken is juicy while being crispy on the outside. Looks good. Number three, I lived in China and I, Guo Qi, Guo Qi, Guo Qi, China. The Chinese Guo Qi is a large dumpling often filled with pork, cabbage, scallions, ginger, rice, wine, and sesame seed oil. The dumplings are fried to make them crispy on the outside before water is added to the pan and it is covered to cook the filling. Mm -hmm. Next one, scallion pancakes, China. 
A simple yet very popular Chinese scallion pancake are made from just flour, oil and scallions. Each pancake is then fried to make it crispy and served with soy sauce. Mm -hmm. So all these things look good. Oh dear. Number five, Espetos. Espetos, Spain. The fifth most popular street food comes from southern Spain. This salty snack is fresh sardines cooked on a skewer over hot coals, adding only olive oil and salt. The street food is simple, really delicious. Looks good too. All right. Let me just give us five. Okay, well, let's go right into the discussion. Again, I'm going to read the question. I'll answer it in the way that I would answer it. I'd like you to hit pause either before or after, and you can either answer and listen what I say. We've got some similarities. Or you can wait till I answer finished and you can add something or say contrasting ideas or maybe say you disagree with me, whatever it may be. Okay, number one, which of the foods described in the article would you like to try? All of the above. <laughs> I love food, so I'll try everything. Um, I've had... I've had the roti a lot. I had roti for breakfast today, actually. Um, dumplings I've had in China, many. I think I've had these flatbreads. Fish is good. I probably, probably this fried chicken. I love fried food. So probably this deep fried chicken. But I'll eat all of it. Okay, number two. What are some popular street foods where you live? Oh, dear. I live in Thailand, so there's so many delicious street foods here. Probably, I mean, the most popular would probably be Pad Thai, Tom Yam Khun. Um, but I really, because really, I love barbecue, I love meats. So they have, I enjoy around this one, because they call like a little skewer with pork meat on it, and it's kind of flat. It's really delicious and like a, it's got a sweet barbecue flavor on it really good that with some sticky rice um so if you come here try mooping and it's quite cheap it's only it depends where you go but like 10 to 15 baht which is about dollars like 50 cents is that yeah about 50 cents us dollars for one it may be even cheaper. All right. What's the best street food you've ever had? Oh, man. Again, I live in Thailand. It's <laughs> so many good things here. Um, I've had so many delicious street foods here in Asia. Uh, I, I would have to probably... Oh, man. <laughs> it would be between somtam, which is, again, papaya salad, which they it's kind of a tricky one because some places it's really good and other places it's like this hard clunky kind of a salad um, so it's a bit of a hit and miss and another thing that I really enjoy was in, in the north in Chiang Mai uh, a northern dish what they call khao soy which is like a type of noodle with curry and like deep fried noodles really good really really good and they have these little pieces of pickled cabbage or pickled something, some kind of a pickle. So it's like the spicy, sweet, sour mixture. Really good. Number four, which of the cities you visited would you say had the best food? <laughs> um, best food, best street food, because there's a difference. Again, street food. It would have to be either, I would probably go with Chiang Mai because I lived there the longest, so I tried the most of the street foods and yeah, it's really good. Um, best food, oh man, that's a difficult one because it depends what you're feeling for. I'm going to say Chiang Mai just because they've got a lot of Western kind of dishes. I had great burgers in Chiang Mai, a lot of street food, a lot of a good mix, a good mix. Yeah. Number five, which of the countries in the article would you like to visit for their food? Oh, dear. Let me just see again. 
Spain, I've been to China, Japan, Malaysia. I've went to, I've been to Malaysia as well. I would probably oh, it'll be difficult between Japan and Spain because Japan's got all this like you know sushi. I mean sushi's everybody love most people love sushi. <laughs> um Kobe beef. I'd love to go try Kobe beef in, in Japan. But then again, Spain they have all these cured meats like the Iberico ham, you know. Maybe oh man, I, I wouldn't know. I think I'd prefer Spain's food more because I'm it's more towards a Western style of food. But I think Japan, if you go there for a holiday, you can you know it's a whole cultural experience. They've got the food. Tokyo cities, they've got it's uh, so many things that I'd like to try. Where Spain is architecture, maybe if you like football or I don't know, I don't know. I'll, I'll go. I'll go to both. I'm gonna because otherwise I'm taking too long to add. I'll go to both. Okay, let's go to number four. Uh, how often do you eat on the go? Um, not as often as a few years back because nowadays we cook a lot at home so not that often yeah not that often anymore how do you usually decide where to eat when traveling uh google i just google if it depends where i'm going i'll google what's like local cuisine or local things that i have to try and go to certain areas and then i'll just walk around and see what looks delicious and i'll just try that as well so a mixture of google to see what people recommend and then just walking around and looking what looks good for me and always a, a good rule of thumb if you're in a foreign country go to the shop where it's busy with local people because if you go to a shop it's like oh it looks cute there's not that many people there's not that many people for a reason so go where it's busy, even if you have to wait in line. But also not just tourists, because tourists might be trapped by something unique or something funny or quirky. It doesn't mean that it's good. Local. Go where the local people go. Though the local people are the return customers, and they have to be kept happy. So wherever they go, the food will be good. What are the best meals you've had abroad? Oh, man, like I said, I've had so many great meals abroad and i've been to so many different countries so probably it'll be a, a mixture between thailand and china because china also has some really good food you know when i go to my country and it's like oh let's get chinese food people think sweet and sour pork or, you know it's just some deep fried pork with rice and a sweet and sour sauce but when i went to china they've got so many different things from all the regions it's crazy and really good food i don't remember the names but there's there's one thing where they make pork belly and they make it so soft if you just you put it in your mouth and it just it just dissolves away it's so good i have no idea what they call it okay number four what restaurants in your town or city would you recommend to tourists um i've I, I just moved to Phuket this year, so I don't know Phuket this well, with low, especially with local foods. Chiang Mai, the papaya salad at the park in the old city. It's on the, you know, Chiang Mai has like a square for the old city, and it's on the lower west corner. Yeah, on the lower west corner, there's a park. I think it's Hard, I don't know the name, Hard Something Park, H-A-A-D -A -A Something Something Park, uh, Work Hard Park or something. And they have really good papaya salad there, just from a local lady there right by the bridge. So good. Some of the best papaya salad I've ever had. But be careful because they make it very spicy. So if you don't like spicy food, just say like, Nick no way, or, or no, no, no spicy. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. All right. Number five. The only thing I like better than talking about food is eating. John Walters, who are the biggest foodies you know? Um, I, 
I mean, I love food and I love trying new places. So I really am always on the lookout for new and interesting things to eat or to make or all of these things. But then again, I've got some friends who are chefs, so I probably they're probably bigger foodies than me because you know they go out there and really really go for it. So probably some of my friends that are chefs. Okay, well that is it. That is everything. Let's close this. And again, uh, tune in every day. I'm going to try and upload five days a week so you guys can have something every day to do. Even, you know, just a little bit, expose yourself to the language. You know, try and talk whenever you can. Say it out loud. I mean, I'm talking here in a room to myself so you can at home just talk to yourself and answer things. And uh, yeah, it's the only way you're going to get better. You have to use it. <laughs> All right. Have a good evening. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.